Hi, and welcome to part one of the AB SciX Q-Trap video series. In this video series, we want to tell you a little more about the benefits of Q-Trap for routine contaminant testings in food and give you some guides on how to implement the Q-Trap functionality in your own lab. This first video will give you a quick overview and example of how Q-Trap can make your routine food testing results better. Think about some of these questions. Are you in a food testing lab? Do you have a Q-Trap or triple quad mass spec system and use it primarily to do MRM quantitation? Do you feel that a Q-Trap system is much more complicated than a regular triple quad mass spec system and you just don't have the time to set up or change your current methods? Do you think that the Q-Trap features do not offer any benefit to your routine quantitation methods? If you answered yes to any of these, then the information we want to share with you in this video series will change the way you look at a Q-Trap mass spec system. We're not only going to tell you about how the Q-Trap can help to improve your routine food testing methods and results, but we'll also give you a step-by-step -step guide to implementing some key Q-Trap functions in your routine methods. Consider your average method. You start with a sample extraction and cleanup, then move on to the LC separation and MS analysis, then you have the data processing to identify and quantify various residues in your unknown samples and then consider some of the questions, concerns, and headaches that you probably experience every day. What is the matrix? Did I extract everything? Did I lose compounds in the cleanup? Are matrix effects complicating my results? Am I certain of the positive findings? The reality is that food testing for contaminants can be complicated, but what you probably don't realize is that Q-Trap can actually be used to help resolve some of your concerns and headaches related to your routine workflows. Let's consider one of the biggest questions that most food testing scientists ask themselves every day. Are matrix effects complicating my results? Food samples can be nasty, and the matrix can often cause signal suppression or have a strange impact on your MRMs. Have you ever looked at your MRM ratios and thought that they are just a little off and you're just not sure if this is a contaminant or a matrix effect? Q-Trap can help you answer these questions. When using enhanced product ion scanning, or EPI, with Q-Trap, it is basically like collecting more than four MRMs for any detected compounds in your sample. This means that if your MRM ratio is slightly off, or you get suppression that reduces sensitivity of your signal, you are able to get a sensitive measure of other fragments. Think of it this way, as collecting data on more than four MRMs without any additional effort. It's automatic. Check this out. Here is a great example. It looks like you've detected imazolil in your sample, but the MRM ratio is just slightly outside of the acceptable range of 0.63, plus or minus 0 0.093 identified from your imazolil standard. So, you're just not sure if you should report the imazolil in this sample. If you're using a Q-Trap, an EPI scan can be triggered automatically when the first imazolil MRM is detected, resulting in a full MSMS scan of that peak. This means that more fragments are scanned and detected, giving you more information to confirm if this peak is imazolil. Think of a full MSMS scan as a fingerprint for your detected compound. You are also able to analyze the full MSMS -MS spectrum against a compound library database. You can think of this as running that fingerprint through a database to compare key characteristics to find a match. In this case, the spectrum of your unknown sample matched the library spectrum of imazolil with a fit of 90.4%. So, although the MRM ratio was slightly off and made the result a little ambiguous, the EPI scan data could be used to decomplicate the results and can give you more confidence in reporting this as a positive result. When matrix effects cause ambiguity in the MRM ratios collected on an ordinary triple quad mass spec, using Q-Trap EPI scanning and the full MSMS fingerprint of that peak can be very beneficial to overcome this. We hope this example has given you some insight into how Q-Trap can help you get better results for your food testing methods. Check out the next videos in this series describing more details about EPI, more examples of Q-Trap benefits for food testing methods, and step-by-step -step guides to help you set up these methods in your own lab.